Evet. Arkadaşlar merhaba. Nasılsınız? I have to first adjust the color. Heh, okay, better. Nasılsınız arkadaşlar? Bugün kaç kişi var? So how many people do we have today? <gülüyor> I'm guessing not that many. I did give the announcement uh, that we would be having. Merhaba Gurpet, nasılsın? So today we will do a quick review of what we learned last lesson. So last lesson we started case markers, right? The Turkish case markers. So uh, ben de iyiyim, teşekkür ederim. So today we're going to do some more exercises. We're going to look at the accusative case. Uh, we last lesson, last Sunday we did the locative, the ablative, and the dative case markers. So in this lesson, we're going to finally look at the instrumental, the accusative. So in total, we will have uh, five, right? Dative, locative, ablative, instrumental, accusative. So yeah, five uh, case markers. So last lesson, we did some exercises on them. And today, we're also going to do some exercises different kinds of exercises. So uh, so one trick, so I have a question from Group Red. So one trick to remember the vowel harmony I mentioned last lesson, I think, is you need to focus on the back and the front categories, okay? So the, in Turkish, there are eight. Merhaba Dimitris, hoş geldin. So in Turkish, there are eight vowels, right? Four of them are front, four of them are back. So there's hardly any trick, actually. You just have to memorize which vowels are front and which vowels are back. And certain case markers, or not just case markers, certain suffixes either have two options or four options. If it's just two options, you just have to choose the same back vowel or front vowel or something that suits. So, for example, uh, let's say, uh, let me give you an example. So, let's just an example. So, the lar and lar suffix. So, this is the plural suffix, right? In Turkish, if you want to say cars, we say araba and lar. So, how do we choose the vowel harmony? We looked at the last vowel inside araba. It's the a sound. So, a is which one? A is a what vowel? Is it a back? Is it a front? So if you don't remember it, one way is to look at this web page. One second, I'm gonna give the link. So this is a this is my free lesson. So in there, there's a chart. So in there, uh, you can see there are two, no, four back vowels and four front vowels. You don't have to focus on whether there's they are unrounded or rounded. You just have to focus on whether it's a back or front ending vowel in Araba, the last vowel. Because when there are only two, two choices for a suffix, you just have to look at whether it's the suffix choices, the lar, lar, for example. There's the a sound, there's the a sound. So, the A sound in Turkish is a back vowel, while the E sound is a front vowel. So Araba also ends in a back vowel, the A sound. So we have to choose another A sound from the suffix variation for the plural suffix. And that's there's only one option, A. So it's Lar. But if there were four choices, for example, uh, let's say the J suffix. J G, Ju, and J. So this is actually the profession suffix, another profession, uh, a derivational suffix. Araba J is basically car maker or maybe like a mechanic. There are different ways. Or you can say Süt. Süt is milk. So Süt is milkman. So 
when you're choosing the correct one for this one there this is a, a exemption because we have to also focus on consonant harm, harm uh, consonant assimilation so because of consonant assimilation the j letter becomes the ch the c with the tail so there are certain suffixes that have consonant assimilation but let's just skip that for now so suit the letter u in turkish right let me write in the chat box is so you have to look at the vowel chart so according to the vowel chart uh, the link that i gave you earlier the u sound is a front vowel so because the g j j j is a four fold so vowel harmony so four fold means four variations you have to choose from four vowel endings and the one that basically fits suit is the ju suffix but we don't say suit ju we have to say suit chu because of the t sound if you remember uh, we had something called fustuk ju shahab as you can see there's also ju fustuk seller so for the consonant letters inside fustuk ju shahab are the letters that are affected from consonant assimilation right so uh, certain suffixes also change the first consonant letter when a noun ends with one of the consonants from fustuk ju shahab so sut has the t letter inside fustuk ju and there's two variations for the ju suffix with either the c or the c with the tail the ju sound so we have to both change that and we have to choose the appropriate vowel so back vowel okay if it's only two choices just focus on the back if it's four you have to focus on both the back and whether the vowel is rounded or unrounded so for example the a u sounds they are both back but they're both unrounded as you can see my lips are relaxed a u but o u they are also back but they are rounded o u okay so front a e they're unrounded they're relaxed their front sounds the tongue is in the front position for these sounds but ö, ü, they're also front, but they're rounded. So that's basically it. Two options. You have to focus on the back front harmony. If there's four variations for the suffix that you're attaching the noun to or any other thing, you have to also focus on rounded or unroundedness. But uh, once you basically memorize, okay, so suit ends with the ü, so I have to choose suit ju according to vowel harmony so it becomes automatic you don't have to think that much you just you know do it like put okay i don't have to think about it so yeah suit ends so araba araba j because a and u are both back sounds and they're both unrounded a u a u araba j so according to the fluentness you have to choose the j suffix so it becomes automatic. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. You won't have to think about it. Okay, Gurpreet? I think you understood. I hope you understood it. You just need to do a lot of practice. If you do a lot of practice, you won't have to think about it. Okay? So thank you, everyone, for joining today's lesson. So for now, we have five people. So we have five people, and I hope it will increase. And so let's continue where we left off. So last lesson, we did locative, ablative, dative cases. So let's also look at the accusative and instrumental. So only two more. Then we will just simply do lots of exercises. I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to show you a picture with the exercise. Then, yeah, practice. Right. So let me share my screen. Oops, not this one. Huh. OK. So this time we will do the accusative case. OK. One second. So the accusative case is basically attached, just like the other case markers, at the end of the noun. And the accusative case is similar to the uh, the article sometimes so it has two uh, options basically you'll see so the accusative case is so let's first write <clears throat> the accusative case 
one second. I'm just going to copy paste on my chart. So if the accusative case, one second, ends in a vowel, we have to use a buffer letter in front of the vowel. So our buffer letter is the ye sound, the, this sound. So this is the buffer letter we add if the noun that we're attaching it to uh, ends in a vowel sound. If it ends in a consonant, we don't have to attach the ye. It's just the u, i, u, u. So as you can see, this is also a four fold vowel harmony. So when you see fourfold, it basically means there are four variations for the suffix. So most of the case markers are fourfold. No, not most of them. The de, da, the locative, and dan, dan, the ablative are twofold, so two choices. But dative is also two choice. Actually, yeah. So most of the case markers uh, are usually two-fold vowel harmony. And the accusative case is a bit different. It's a bit exception. So you have to focus on when you're attaching uh, the case marker, you have to focus on back, front, and rounded, unrounded, okay? So, for example, if we want to say Araba, Araba, then we attach the case marker. You have to, I'm going to do this for now. It will become Araba Y. Why? Because A, it ends in a vowel. So, A is a back, unrounded vowel. So we have four choices. We don't have arabaya. Arabaya means to the car. That's a different case mark. That's a dative case. For the accusative case, we only have u, u, u, u, or u, i, u, u. So we have to choose another of the vowel, another vowel of the same category. So it has to be back and it has to be unrounded. So we have to only we only have the u sound. So it becomes arabaya. Arabaya basically means the car in Turkish. But the accusative case uh, is really not just the definite article. No, it's not the D article in Turkish. It's also used to show uh, an object is affected. So it's a transit. The verb becomes a transitive verb. So the object is, becomes a direct object so the accusative case is really interesting so most people think that okay uh, the accusative case is the direct object no but the accusative case has many usages it's not just the, the article in turkish we actually don't have the definite uh, the definite ar uh, like the, the article in turkish it has the similar meaning similar uses because when you translate it to english it is translated as the, but in Turkish, it's not used as the. So it has multiple meanings, which you will see hopefully when you start to learn uh, intermediate level Turkish, advanced level Turkish. But here, basically you can say, okay, accusative is the direct, it shows the direct object. So a noun, which is affected by the verb, but most of the time uh, gets the accusative suffix. Or if you want to focus the, and show that the noun is an accusative or, uh, I mean, a definite thing, then you can also use the accusative case. So I'm going to give you some examples. So let me write it. First, I'm going to write a few sentences. Then I will want you to write, I will give you some examples in English and I will want you to translate them. Okay? Okay. Just a second. So let's say... So gezmek is a verb we will uh, learn, gezmek, to travel, okay? So let's say İzmir, and I'm, let's say I want, uh, I traveled to İzmir, or I uh, not traveled, I uh, travel is not that of a good uh, translation. So gezmek, can mean tour, I toured. 
to Tor to Tor İzmir. So if you want to say I toured İzmir, İzmir'i gezdim. So if you remember, when we attach the case markers to a proper noun, so a proper noun was nouns that are that uh, are special, like country names, people's names, city names. So İzmir is a city in Turkey. So it's on the uh, western part of Turkey. It's one of the famous cities. So anyone watching this lesson in from Turkey, also living in Izmir, they will know that it's a beautiful city. Uh, so I hope I would like, I mean, in the future, I hope to maybe live in a city like Izmir. Right now I'm living in Ankara. <laughs> and Ankara, the weather is really bad. If you're also living in Turkey, you may have seen that there was a cold uh, air coming from Siberia and it was a nice weather a week before. Now it's really bad. So I hope to live in Izmir and say İzmir'i gezdim. I traveled, I toured İzmir. So the rule here is we look at the last vowel. It's the E sound. So we have a similar sound for the accusative case where there's already an E sound. We simply choose the E sound. So İzmir'i gezdim. And this will translate as I toured İzmir. We don't say İzmir gezdim. It doesn't make sense because it's grammatically incorrect. Because gezmek requires a case marker. So you may have remembered from our last, uh, yeah, İzmir had an earthquake. Yeah, İzmir has a lot of earthquakes, unfortunately. So you may have remembered uh, that certain verbs in Turkish require certain case markers. Okay, so in our last lesson, uh, I think we did see some examples. Let's see if, if I can find them. Has <laughs> like hasta neye. So gitmek requires the dative case because there's a movement action. So and dative case is mainly used in basic usage as a movement action. For example, from, so bought from in Turkish requires the den. Or if I want to say I came from, then it also requires the dan, the ablative. And there are, like I mentioned, verbs in Turkish that also have to use the accusative case. So let's say, for example, almak or satın almak means to buy. Uh, or purchase requires the accusative, that's right. And let's say, let's remember if we can, do, if you, anyone who's watching this can, if they know any verbs that require the accusative case, please let me know, please write in the comments. For example, when you're making a sentence with a some, some certain verb, you have to use the accusative case. Do you remember if you know? Can you write me in the chat box? If not, I'm going to write a few sent, uh, example verbs. Then we will also make some sentences. So, uh, for example, say red make to watch. So certain verbs can be made both with and without a case marker. So the case marker has the definiteness, the direct object, but uh, I will show you in a moment the difference between uh, verbs that can be made with or without a case marker. For example, istemek, to want. One second, let me... Uh, that. Okay, so if you want to say, for example, uh, almak, araba almak istiyorum, meaning I want to buy a car. But if you say arabayı almak istiyorum, it becomes different. 
how different I want to buy the car. So there's a specific car that I want to buy. I'm pointing it out. And when you use, when you use the accusative case on the Araba, the noun, then it becomes definite. I want to buy the car. So this is how the accusative case changes the sentence. So if you say, for example, Televizyon seyretmek istiyorum. It means I want to watch the t I want to watch TV. But if you say Televizyon Televizyonu seyretmek istiyorum, it becomes I want to watch the TV. So it's a specific TV. I'm pointing the TV. I want to watch that. So that's how it is. Yeah. So söylemek. So let's say, for example, oh, by the way, Tosh Toshiro Coat. Toshiro, hoş geldin. So say, uh, söylemek, if you remember, means say. So can we make a sentence with söylemek? Uh, so you can say şarkı söylemek istiyorum. I want to sing. So different. It has different usages. So if you just say söylemek, it becomes to say, but if you use it with an object, it becomes to sing. Şarkı söylemek. But if you say, for example, şarkıyı söylemek istiyorum. I want to sing it. So it's a bit hidden. So the, I want to say, uh, sing that specific song. So as you can see, this time it's different. Sh it's not şarkı söylemek, it's şarkıyı söylemek. I, it's not just actually sing. I want to, uh, uh, let's say, söylemek, another word for sing would be, uh, yeah, let's just say sing. That's, and that's not complicated. <laughs> so şarkıyı söylemek istiyorum. Then it becomes different. So specific song, okay? So, any questions so far? So, any points that you haven't understood with the accusative case? Any questions? Kupret, Toshiro, Dimitris. So, if you have any questions about either the accusative case or the other case markers, I did the other case markers for anyone who's watching the first time. So, one question, let's see. So what does adding U to the end of television mean? Ah, okay, so that's the accusative case, right? So the U. So the accusative case is a four-fold vowel harmony. So it has four vowel options, four choices. It's not just the U suffix. The accusative case is not just the U suffix. It's U, E, U, and U. So according to vowel harmony, we have to choose from either of these. If it's if the noun that we're attaching to ends in a vowel, then we have to add our buffer letter, the ye sound, in front of the accusative suffix. So it's it becomes u, ye, u, u. So the other case markers were always two-fold vowel harmony. So they had two choices, like the locative case. The de, da, when you're talking about a place, meaning at, on, in. Or dan, dan, meaning from, for the ablative. Or e, a, or ye, ya, for the dative saying to. But the accusative case, it has four options. It's a four-fold vowel harmony. So the u here, television here, it's actually, actually the accusative case. Okay? So... You have to be careful with the vowel harmony. You have to be careful with how many variations a suffix can have. Certain suffix can sometimes have, for example, one variation. The Turkish ki, the conjunction. So this conjunction is a special conjunction. It can mean uh, which, that, or like an exclamation. So I'm not going to show you this. For now, because this goes into intermediate level, maybe that sometimes uh, we have uh, some combinations like the locative case 
plus the key suffix, which means a key. For example, okul a key, which means oops, okul yeah, okul da ki, uh, with meaning which is at the school. So you can see here that the key is not affected from vowel harmony. Why? The A and the E sounds are different categories. The A is a back vowel. Of, uh, the E is a front vowel. So if there's one variation, then usually it doesn't get affected. It's always the same. So we will see this, hopefully, in the future. Not, not in this lesson. So don't get your... Uh, don't get confused when you see it for now. So I'm going to erase it. But you simply have to focus on whether uh, a vowel, a suffix has more than one variation or two variations or four variations. You just have to be careful, read the details, read the explanation carefully, okay? So any other questions? Do you have any other questions with the case markers, especially with the accusative case? or any other case markers, locative, dative, ablative. If you have, please let me know. If you don't, let's first do some exercises with the accusative case. Any questions? Let me drink a little water. If not, okay, another question. Uh, so, gönüllü. So, gönüllü means gönüllü means volunteer, right? Gönüllüyü, right? So, you have to add S there, right? Just like that. You can say gönüllüyü because uh, the U and the U sounds are different, right? There are different categories. The U is a back vowel. U is a front vowel, and we already have the U option for the accusative, right? If you look at the chart, so it's not gönüllü U, it wouldn't be correct because we already have an option for U sound. We basically choose the closest sound and attach it. If, for example, for some reason, if there was no U sound and there was maybe like two vowel harmony, then which one we would have chosen? The closest sound, so it would that be U sound, for example, if it if this was a twofold vowel harmony, but because there is a four variation, you have to choose from the closest sound according to the ending of the noun, gönüllü U sound, and the suffix for the accusative case. So gönüllü, the accusative case has the U, Y, U, U options. The closest to gönüllü is gönüllüyü, right? Gönüllüyü gördüm, for example. I saw the volunteer. If you say gönüllü gördüm, I, it becomes I saw volunteer. I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? This is basically the rule. You just have to focus on the vowel harmony. So the vowel harmony is the basis of the Turkish language. When you're conjugating verbs, when you're attaching a suffix to a noun, even starting from the basics, going to the advanced level Turkish, you always have to focus on vowel harmony and consonant assimilation. And that's a different topic. So certain uh, options, certain case markers have letters, the consonants that are affected from assimilation and they have to change, but also vowel harmony. So it's basically the same thing. It's the harmony of the consonant, harmony of the let, uh, vowel letters. So you just have to memorize it. The one, the best way to memorize it is to do a lot of practice, to do a lot of writing exercises. So a book that I would recommend, uh, and I'm also using for this today's lesson is uh, Yavancı. I, I, should, I especially like the exercises in this book, Yabancı Dilim Türkçe. I mean, it's not a grammar explanation book. It's just exercises. So if you need a lot of exercises, you can search this book, buy it, 
<laughs> I mean, there are ways to find it illegally as a torrent file on the internet. I'm not going to mention them, but if you want to support the author, be sure to buy it. If you don't have the money, well, yeah, you know what to do. So do a lot of exercises. This book, the series has five or six books, I think. So you can start from the first book or the second one. So it, those two first books, first and second book, book is good for beginner level learners. And we can basically do the exercises, watch the free lessons on the Turkish Olic YouTube channel and do the exercises on the book for good practice. Okay, so let's do some exercises for the accusative case, okay? Because we also have to uh, look at the instrumental case after this one. So I'm gonna go back to my screen and share something else. By the way, I'm alone today, so I hope no one comes in. <laughs> uh, one second. So share screen, picture, which one? One second. Where is it? Where is my file? Ah, okay, I found it. Ah, I have to make it a bit smaller. So this is an exercise from the book that I just mentioned, the uh, Yabancı Dilim Türkçe book. So this is the seventh unit on the second book. Okay, so we're going to do some exercises. So you can see here that if the noun ends in a consonant, just have to add the u, i, u, u variation. If the uh, noun ends in a vowel sound, you have to add the u, i, u, u variation. So we're gonna, let's first look at the first 10 sentences. So can you see them? I hope you can see them. If you cannot see them, please let me know. I will try to make them a little bit bigger. Oops. So I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to give you a few minutes. So you may need to change certain letters. So for example, kitab uh, ends in a pay sound. So according to first, uh, first to shahab rule, you need to change certain letters, right? First, let me write it actually. So, Fustuk to Shahab means a uh, peanut nut seller uh, Shahab. Okay, I'm going to give you one minute. I'm not going to give you the answers uh, quickly. <laughs> I'm speaking Turkish sometimes. So, I'm going to wait for you to do these 10 sentences. Okay, I'm not gonna interfere, interfere anything. Okay, first one, good. Let's see the second one. Can anyone do the second one? So be, be careful with the vowel harmony. If you remember the consonant assimilation rule, be sure to apply it. I'm not gonna say it now, but I did see some small mistakes with uh, Toshiro, Toshiro's first sentence, but I will explain it in a moment, don't worry. Okay, second one, nice one. What about the third? Okay. Nice one. Güzel. What about the fourth one? I'm also going to give you the meanings of these sentences. I'm going to translate them if you don't know any of these words, if you want the translation, so don't worry. Okay, güzel. Toshiro, Agato, Agota, hoş geldin. I think you just, uh, maybe you were in the beginning of the lesson, you forgot to say something. Be sure to say hello. I would like to hear your nice words. 
Okay, what about the fifth one? Nice, number three, number four is nice. Let's see if you can also do the fifth one. Be sure to uh, use a Turkish keyboard. So if you're watching this on a PC or if you're watching it on a, if you're watching this live stream through your phone, tablet, dot, dot, dot, be sure to install a Turkish keyboard so that because otherwise I won't know if you're actually using the correct vowel. <laughs> If you, some some of my students are lazy, they forget to add uh, the Turkish keyboard onto their device, and they expect me to understand which vowel, even though they <laughs> I don't know which vowel it is. Evet, hoş, gel hoş geldin, uh, Agota. Okay, so number five is good. What about six? Okay, güzel. So there are four more left. Oh, you're also your first time, right, Toshira? Hoş geldin. Hoş bulduk. So be sure to watch all the other lessons, not just the live lessons. I have a lot of, I have a speaking Turkish in 30 days video course on the YouTube channel. It's basically a Turkish grammar course, reviewing some of the grammars in Turkish. It's a free course. It's not my best course. It's my first course. So it's not in depth. It's not in detail. But it's a nice way to start and review some of the Turkish grammars. I also have a lot of vocabulary lessons, so you can watch them. But the best things are on the website. The best courses are on the website. I have premium courses. I have a section for exercises like these ones. Actually, I will do a new announcement at the end of today's lesson. So you will, uh, I will talk about some interesting things that are going to happen to the Turk Sholik website. But I will explain them at the end of the lesson, so stay tuned. <laughs> okay, number eight. Yeah, Agota. Okay. So uh, we have to focus, we have to maybe do a later on a lesson on constant assimilation. So don't worry. Okay. Gazete, gazete. Yeah, you can write the uh, word or the sentence, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give you uh, a few more seconds. Dimitris, güzel. Okay. One more minute. One minute. Then I'm going to jump in and do the exercises, the explain the solutions and check if there are anything incorrect with your sentences. Now, so 30 seconds. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, I think everyone is done. So let's let's look at the first one. So Toshiro, you said bu kitapı dün aldım. Okay, so the vowel harmony is correct, but there is a small mistake here. So Kitap, when we attach the accusative case, the P sound becomes the B sound. Okay, so the P sound becomes the B sound. So this is consonant assimilation and certain letters in Turkish change when certain vowels are added, okay? So P becomes B. For example, I had a nice list for this. I hope I can find it. Uh, I don't know if I can find it. The B, sometimes the P becomes B. The T also, 
the two at the end of a noun also affects the two if there's a vowel that starts with a two it also becomes two so blue and two and two so basically the letters the two becomes uh, let me write it here one second so a becomes b and most of the time j becomes j and the k becomes the soft g so i'm going to make the, uh, have this open here and i'm going to read out the answers so bu kitabu it's not kitabu but kitabu with the b letter bu kitabu dun aldım bu kitabı dün aldım so the p sound at the end of kitap becomes b okay p changes to b j changes to k and the uh, j changes <laughs> changes to ch and the k changes to the soft g sometimes the soft g become uh, the normal g becomes the soft g but i don't think there's any uh, thing like that here okay yeah so for example the te doesn't change uh, to de here that's for a different suffix for example the hours tense gitmek becomes gider but that's for the hours tense so this is uh, we don't have uh let's see we, do we have it for any of the case markers uh, okula for example okula, no not the okula uh yeah de yeah de da becomes te ta right uh, ish let's say ish ish de becomes ish eh. but that's a different one they, this is not that's not for the accusative case so that's for the locative case the because there is a she sound, like uh, if you remember from Fistukji Shahab, because of the she sound, the locative case, the da also has a te ta variation. So because of the ch sh sound, the de sound changes to t. Yeah, but for this one, we don't have that. For this one, we only have pe becomes be, j becomes che, and k becomes the safji. Okay, so bu kitabu. Dun aldım. I bought this book yesterday. Okay, so number two. Şu ceket. So şu ceketi almak istiyorum. So there's no sound changing here. It's the same. We just have to focus on vowel harmony. Şu ceketi almak istiyorum. So... We basically have to focus on the vowel harmony for this one, right? So jacket a sound ends in the front vowel. So according to the case marker for the accusative case, this closest sound for the a sound, the front unrounded sound, is the e sound. So shu jaketi almak istiyorum. Okay, so it means I want to buy this or that jacket. So in Turkish we have bu, shu, and o. So bu here, shu is there, and o is farther. In English, we only had two options, this and that. But in Turkish we have three different options. <laughs> bu, shu, o. I don't know why. Maybe it's better. It depends on your perspective. But it basically is different uh, distances. Bu, shu, o. Okay, number three. O, araba. We already did the noun araba like a hundred times. So araba you. A sound. So the araba ends in a vowel sound. We have to use the buffer letter y. And a and u are the closest sounds, right? Both a and the u are back unrounded sounds. We have to choose the u sound because we don't have araba yet. That's a different case marker. O arabayı istiyor musun? Do you want that car? Güzel. So, masa is table. Sil is 
uh, the verb for clean, uh, yeah, uh, erase, or it, it's not just erase, it means clean and erase, and it's a uh, ordering verb, imperatives. So, bu masayı sil lütfen. So, bu masayı sil lütfen. Please wash, please clean, please. Uh, so, sil, how, what, what could we say for sil? Clean, remove, erase, delete, yeah. Please clean this table. So, masa ends in a vowel, so we have to use the vowel, uh, the consonant, the buffer letter again, just like with the Araba. Okay, number five. Shebnam is a proper noun, and proper nouns, when we attach a case marker to proper nouns, so Shebnam is a person name, a female uh, name, we have to use the apostrophe. So we have to put an apostrophe in between the case marker and the noun, the proper noun. And we also need to use sometimes the buffer letter, but for this one, because Shebnam ends, ends in a consonant, we only have to use the uh, accusative case without the buffer letter. So Sheb, Shebnemi, Shebnem I, with, with the I with the dot. Shebnemi tanıyorum, tanımak, to know. I know Shebnem, Shebnemi tanıyorum. So let me check if everyone did this correct. Uh, yeah. So Dimitris, you have to be careful with the apostrophe. That's just a small mistake, I think. So you have to use the apostrophe with people's name, country names, location names, names of special things. You have to use the apostrophe. So there are some exceptions, but that's a different su uh, subject. So most of the time in basic usage, you have to be careful with the apostrophe. Okay, number six. Turkey is a proper noun. So Turkey and the E letter. So, Türkiye'yi gördük. So, we have to use the buffer letter again because it ends in a vowel letter. Türkiye'yi gördük. We saw Turkey. So, we, was, we went to Turkey and we saw it. And number seven. And let me actually close this one. One second. And number seven. Teatro. Teatro is theater, right? So, aramak has two usages. Aramak means to call someone on the phone, and it also means to search. So, teatro you. Teatro you. So, teatro ends with the O letter, and O is a back rounded vowel so we don't have your accusative suffix we only have you so the u ending is the closest sound teatro you arıyorum so we don't have to use apostrophe teatro is just a proper it's a normal noun if it was like a pro, uh, special theater then it would have been different it would have to be for example izmir teatro su nu then that's a different completely different suffix Okay, teatro you are your. I'm searching. I'm looking for the theater. So number nine is a special sentence. Why? Because we have the music letter with which ends in the K sound. So let me write the, the correct one. Hangi music? Seviyorsun. So it's not hangi müziki, it's hangi müziği. Why? Because the K sound changes to the soft G. Uh, why? So the soft G is like the Y, yeah, it's similar to the Y yeah sound, like the buffer Y, yeah, but it's a special letter in Turkish. I mean, it changes a lot. And most of the time, if a noun ends, in the K letter, we usually change it to the soft G, whatever suffix it is. And most of the time, if a suffix ends uh, starts with a vowel letter, it usually changes. But there are limitations. I mean, there aren't many 
suffixes that start with a vowel letter, like the accusative case. So you don't have to worry. So you, don't, you only have to memorize it for the accusative case. Okay. So it's not musiki, it's musi. So this means which music do you like? Hangi musi seviyorsun? And number 10, finally, gazete is newspaper, okumak is read. Hangi gazeteyi? So gazete ends in a vowel letter, so it's gazeteyi okuyors, right? So yatak, yataka gittim ya. Yatağa gittim. Yeah, that's correct. Yatağa gittim. This is correct. Hangi yatak becomes yata. So yatak a is incorrect. Yata, right? Okay. So hangi gazeteyi okuyorsun? Gazeteyi. Okay, so any other questions here from this exercise? I mean, uh, there are more. So if you like, we can do it. Or if you like, we can move on to the instrumental case. But actually, we can do it, actually, if you like. So we can do the instrumental case later because instrumental case is just wit. So it's not that special compared to the executive case. So let's just focus on finishing. Let's, let's finish this exercise. So from 11 until number 20 let's do this one again so i'm gonna rest my vocal cords so let's see if we can do this so be sure to remember the uh first to shop rule so the p becomes b the j becomes ch and the k becomes the soft g okay so one second oops and that, that. Huh. So let's see if we can do these ones. I'm not going to interfere. I'm going to wait until all of you finish it. So there are 10, 9, 9 questions. Yeah, I had 9 questions. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 10 questions. Yeah, not 9 questions. So let's see if we can do them. Yeah. So uh, the vowel harmony lesson, actually, you can just visit this web page. So if you visit the Turkish Holic website, it's better. It's more organized. You can visit this link or simply go to turkishaholic.com, then click on courses, then click on the lesson named consonant assimilation and vowel harmony or simply click, click on this link, it's your choice. Be sure to watch the lessons from the start. It's good practice for you, okay? Take care, Toshiro. See you, hopefully see you on our next lesson or hopefully you will uh, comment on the lessons when you watch them. By the way, welcome Pearl Berry Islander. Hoş geldin. Let's see if we can correctly do them following the vowel harmony rule and following the constant assimilation rule. So I'm gonna close this. Rica ederim Toshiro, görüşürüz. Okay. So 11, good. What about 12? So we can maybe do the instrumental case next time so for today let's just finish this exercise that will i think it will be a good practice for you then maybe hopefully on our next lessons uh, we can do the other topics i have some announcements after we finish correcting checking these exercises so be sure to wait until the end so they i have some really important announcements to make uh, so two, three announcements maybe, yeah. So be sure to not leave and wait if you have some time, maybe 10, 15 more minutes, not that much, okay? Okay, number 15, let's see the rest. Okay.
Güzel. So today was a really exhausting day for, for me. I attend a Turkish dictation course on the weekends. Uh, so I have to speak a lot, do a lot of voice recordings. So I'm not really uh, accustomed to speaking too much. And when I speak too much, my throat hurts. Maybe I'm not using uh, my vocal cords and my throat and my diaphragm accurately. That could be one reason. So I don't like to speak too much most of the time, even though my job teaching requires me to speak a lot. I still cannot get accustomed to this. So yeah. So that's why I have to drink a lot of water. Otherwise, yeah, I will have a, a really sore throat the next morning. Okay, what about 17, 18, 19, and 20? Let's see if we can make them. <clears throat> I'm giving you one more minute. If you can do it, that is good. If you can't, I'm going to give the answers. Just one more minute, okay? because we're almost coming to the end of today's lesson. So it's been almost an hour. So let's see if we can finish this. So 17, 18 and 19 and 20. So just four more. Let's see if we can finish. Pearl, Berry, Islander, Agato, Agota. Uh, we had a few. Dimitris, you're pretty quiet. Why are you quiet? Also, Gurpret, why are you quiet? <laughs> you haven't answered any of them. If you know, answer them, please. <laughs> okay, 18, last two. Let's see if we can correctly answer them. Okay, 19, good job. Let's see. Last one. So it's not that difficult. Yeah? Basically, you have to focus on the vowel harmony, look at which variations the accusative case has, and just up add it, you know, that's all. This is not the complicated version. This is the, one of the easier exercises. Okay. I think we can start checking the answers. Okay, so let's start with 11. Hangi filmi? So film ends in the E sound, E. So we also have an E sound for the accusative variation. Filmi, hangi filmi seyrettiniz? So which film did you watch? Seyretmek becomes watch. Okay, nice job. Number 12. Hangi dil dili hangi dili konuşuyorsun? So dil is means tongue and language, right? Merhaba, hoş geldin Surva. Uh, you're a bit late though. <laughs> you came to the end of this lesson, so be sure to come in here at least an hour before uh, the start of the lesson. I mean, you can still watch this lesson as a video lesson, so it's okay. So we came, you came almost to the end. So, but uh, yeah, no, no worries. At least you came. So, hangi dili konuşuyorsun? Number 13. Melda is a Turkish female name. Melda benim kitabı. So, kitap, uh, the P sound becomes the B sound. Hangi kitabı okuyor? So, Melda... Oh, not hangi kitabı. Melda benim kitabı okuyor. Melda is reading my book. Okay, kitabı. Necip. Necip is a male name in Turkish. Kek, cake. Yedi is not yedi as in the number seven. It's the yemek verb in the past tense. <laughs> yeah, we also have yedi meaning seven. So Necip bizim keki. Yedi. So Nejib ate our cake. 
Filiz female name. Filiz senin resmi. So resmi becomes in spoken Turkish resmi. So the E sound between the S and the M usually change is usually dropped in spoken Turkish. It's called high vowel omission. So I'm actually going to explain this a lot, spoken Turkish connected speech a lot in one of my newer courses, which I will explain at the end of this lesson. So Necip bizim, uh, not Necip, Filiz senin resmi gördü becomes res, senin uh, resmi gördü. But that's spoken Turkish. Written Turkish is written like this, resmi gördü. So Filiz saw your picture. 16. Mehmet sizin adresi bilmiyor. Mehmet sizin adresi bil, bilmiyor. So Mehmet doesn't know your address. And number seven, çocukları lar ı, çocukları seviyorum. I love children. Çocukları seviyorum. Eighteen, futbolcular. It's the same. Futbolcuları herkes tanıyor. Tanımak means to know. Herkes means everyone, right? Futbolcuları herkes tanıyor. So everyone knows the footballers, the football players. Number 19, hayvanları koruyoruz. Korumak means to protect. Hayvan is animal, hayvanlar animals. Hayvanları koruyoruz. We are protecting the animals. And finally, number 20, bütün işler bitirdiler. Bütün işleri bitirdiler. So işler means work, job. Uh, errands, uh, it can mean a lot of things. Bütün işler, bütün means all and bitirmek means to finish. So bütün işleri bitirdiler means they finished all the errands, all the job. And yeah, that's about it. I hope it was a nice exercise. So we came to the end of today's lesson. Okay, so uh, before we end this lesson, I'm going to make some announcements. I have some important announcements to make. Uh, so the first announcement may not be a good announcement so for some of you. Uh, I will be taking a break from these live lessons. The reason for this is uh, we are starting uh, Turkish Holic group lessons. So these are pre uh, paid uh, Zoom lessons, online lessons. So we are starting our online group lessons for A1 and A2 level and, A and B1 and B2. So we're going to open probably two groups, maybe three groups, depending on uh, whether people want to join them. So basically, uh, let me explain them. There will be 12 lessons in one month and the fee is going to be really cheap. So let me explain my fee for private lessons. Normally it's 15 euro for one hour. But this one, this group lesson, in, in this group lesson, there will be minimum of four people, max, maximum six people. And in one month, we will do 12 hours. So in one week, there will be one and a half hours one day and one and a half hours another day. In total, 12 hours. And the price for the one month, 12 hours of class will be 100 euros. So compared to our private lesson, it's maybe almost 50% cheaper and more accessible. So it's going to be a group lesson. I will be opening the applications starting tomorrow. So you will have to visit a Google Forms section, fill in your email and telephone number with the country code, and then we will add you to the group. So if you're interested in paid group lessons for the A1, A2 levels and B1, B2 levels, I'm first gonna open up the A1, A2 group. Then if there are people who would like to also have a B1, B group, less, uh, group lesson, I'm also gonna open the applications for that one. And you can basically uh, apply for our group lessons. So the group lessons are going to be done not by me, 
but our content creator, uh, uh, teacher of ours, Memnuha teacher, she usually helps me make the video content on behind the scenes. So she doesn't like to be in front of the camera. So she is usually behind the scenes. She helps me make the video lessons, the contents, you know, stuff that we put on both YouTube and the premium website. So she will be doing, she will be attending the group lessons and she's going to be performing all the lessons of the lectures. She's going to be providing all the materials. The group lessons are really fun. I mean, because it's not like this lesson. So you will be able to attend, you will be able to speak uh, and the lessons are affordable. So I will be posting a link in the comments section after this live lesson ends. So you can apply if you're interested. The price is really cheap. It's 12 hours, it's 100 euro, really cheap compared to my private lessons or to our private lessons. So if you're interested, please let me know. Okay, so apply and once everything is ready, the lessons will start on 1 April, Friday. So the application will continue until uh, the 28th. Yeah, let's say 28th of March. So I'm going to op open the applications until the 28th of March, maybe the 29th, it depends. So people uh, who pay the fee and uh, attend the lesson, then I will close the application. So you will have to wait another month if you would like to join the next group. Okay. So that's the first announcement. One second. Okay, so the second announcement, as I mentioned, uh, I won't be able to make the, these YouTube live lessons for some time. I will have to take a break. The reason is because of the group lessons. We have to focus on the group lessons. And another reason is Turkishaholic is changing. Turkishaholic 4.0. 4.0. So actually, the Turkish Holic website that you're, if you visited the website, it, it has been online for the last, for, you know, for from it started from in 2018. The first version of the Turkish Holic website was first made in 2018. So we're in the year 2022. So it's been online for almost four years. So uh, to memorize to commemorate <laughs> the fourth year, Turkish Olic 4.0 is now under construction. So what's different with Turkish Olic 4.0? The biggest thing is going to be uh, our system is changing. So right now, the Turkish Olic, the premium content is uh, has a membership website. So if you join the membership and if you become a premium member, you get access to everything for, you know, there are different choices for like one month is 10 euro, for six months is 30, for unlimited is 80 euro. We're gonna change that. The reason is because we have to evolve and the membership thing is not that good for us in the long term. Instead, we're gonna focus on a system similar to Udemy. Maybe you visited Udemy. It's like a course selling system. So instead of selling membership, we're gonna focus, we're gonna change to the course selling format. So one thing that you can do is we still have time, maybe at least six more months until we change to the new system. But if you're an unlimited member at our website, uh, you will be automatically enrolled in all the new Turkish courses, premium courses, materials, exercises, reading, writing, that newer courses on our website without uh, having to pay for another uh, course. Basically, if you become an unlimited member, which is 80 euro at the moment, you're going to be saving a huge amount of money because our newer courses are going to be really different. Nothing like you've seen before. It's going to be really detailed, really logical and really interesting. And the price is also going to be higher. It's not going to be 80 anymore. It's one, and the price of one course uh, is going to be really ex higher. So if you want to save big time, you still have some time, but I still haven't made the real announcement, but hopefully I will make the real announcement 
in a really close time. So if you become unlimited member, you can automatically become and you can automatically get enrolled in all the new content without paying anything else. So normally you may have to pay maybe like maybe 800, 900 euros to get access to all the content. There's going to be a lot of content, but if you become unlimited now, you don't have to pay anything. I will automatically enroll you when the new system is up. So be sure to, if you're not an unlimited member, be sure to become an unlimited member. You can uh, visit our website, click the user manual, and you can learn more about everything on our premium section. Okay, uh, so that's my last announcement. The group lessons are starting, the website is changing. And lastly, uh, we are going to start a newsletter for Turkish Holic. So the newsletter is not going to be like a simple newsletter that you may have seen on some Turkish learning platforms. So you may have uh, noticed that we're not adding too many video lessons on the YouTube lesson, uh, YouTube channel. The reason for that is I'm saving these videos for the newsletter. So I'm going to make the announcement, the real announcement soon. But basically, uh, if you become a newsletter subscriber, which I will make an announcement soon, uh, I will be giving you access to these free new courses that are only available to our subscribers and our subscribers will get ac early access sneak peeks to our new premium content that won't be available to anyone else i'm also going to make an announcement on that so be sure to check out the community tab on the youtube page and also the if you log on to the website when you log on to your account be sure to look at the announcements section I'm going to make the announcements there. Everything is going to change. The system is going to change. The website is going to change. <laughs> so basically, you have to be on the watch, okay? So be sure to watch everything. Be sure to look at all the announcements. Check out our social medias because a lot of things are changing. So the system is going to change. Everything is going to be really interesting. And you're not going to see something like this on any, on any of the other Turkish learning platforms. I'm going to, I can guarantee you that. So it's going to be completely different. So be sure to follow everything that we share. Okay. So I'm going to copy the link uh, for the group lesson application form. So if you're interested in the group lessons, uh, when this YouTube lesson, uh, live lesson ends, be sure to click and apply because there will be only limited amount of people that can apply for our group lessons, maximum six, minimum four. Once the application is finished, even if it finishes early, you can't apply it anymore. So don't miss your chance. It's going to be 12 hours and it's going to be in one month, 12 hours, and it's only going to be 100 euros for the 12 hours. So it's going to be really cheap compared to our private lessons. Okay. so. If you have any other questions, please write them right now. Do you have any other questions? I'm going to check them before I finish this live stream. I'm going to drink <laughs> some water. I was too excited uh, when I made this announcement, so I, I have to drink a little water. Any questions with any of the announcements that I made? For the website, newsletter, the group lessons. Do you have any announcements? And uh, not announcements. Any questions that you want to ask me? I'm giving you the time, so you will have to wait. If you don't uh, take this chance, you will have to wait for my answer when you ask a question for another day. So this is your chance. Any questions? So if you're interested, for example, let's say Gökberg, I would like you to open. The B1 group lessons, I would like to join the B1 group lessons for Turkish. Then ask them. If you want, you can also say, I want B2, I want C1. Ask them. Anything? Nothing? Yeah, nothing, I guess. Okay, so we're going to end our lesson today here. As I mentioned before, I have to take some break from the live lessons. Hopefully, I will start them again soon. But right now, this coming month, I'm going to be extremely busy because I'm creating the outline for our new Turkish course. 
it's going to be really detailed, really interesting and really fun. It's going to be A1 until C1 level. So no one has made such a course at the moment online. I haven't seen any courses like this one that I'm making. So it's going to be really interesting. And if you want to freely upgrade to all the new content, this is going to be your last chance because once the website moves to the new version, and even if you want to, you know, move quickly and without paying much money, without paying anything extra, you won't have the chance because the website will have changed and you will have to purchase everything, you know, one by one and pay much more. So this will be your last chance to take advantage of this huge discount. So if you become a premium unlimited member, every unlimited member on the website will be automatically enrolled to the new system everything you will get access to maybe thousands of dollars worth of content for only just 80 dollars 80 euros okay so i'm guessing no one has any questions so i'm gonna finish today's lesson here thank you everyone for joining thank you let's start from gurpreet toshiro dimitris agota and Pearl Berry Islander and Sirwa. Thank you for joining. Anyone I didn't I forgot to mention or the uh, anyone else who's watching without commenting. Also, thank you for joining this lesson. We finished the case markers. We didn't have a chance to look at the instrumental, but hopefully in our next live lesson, which I will announce later, but it's not gonna be next week, we will continue with something else. If you have any suggestions please let me know. You can write them in the uh, comment below. You can send me an email, info at turkishaholic.com. If you have any other kind of suggestions, any questions, write them, send me a message. I'm always here. I'm always be here to support you. I want to help you learn Turkish in the best and the most effective way, most logical way, most easiest way possible. This is Gökberk, and thank you again for joining this lesson. I hope to see you again. Görüşürüz arkadaşlar. İyi akşamlar. İyi akşamlar.